Hey everyone, thank you for stopping back by. I am Tia. Today, I'm hoping this will be my last filming because you all know I like to do a video straight through. This is being filmed May 9th, very, very early in the morning because we're doing vlog a day in May and I can't miss a day. Now, for those outside of the United States, just so you know, this was Mother's Day weekend and I am a mother. So I did enjoy some Mother's Day festivities that were provided to me. I went to dinner and I also got a beautiful rose bouquet. My dad knows me so well. I love color. So he got me this multicolor bouquet. The um, buds were more closed when I got it and they're starting to open, which delights the heck out of me. So that's my bouquet. I love that blue rose in particular. And then my brother took us out to dinner. I had many text messages from lovely friends and even my ex-husband sent a text. So yeah, it was a good day for me. And I even got a nap in, which is always just like the cherry on top for a good day. So you didn't come here to see my roses. You probably saw the title and said, let me find out what this is about. It's about the soft life. It's about softening your life and intentionally softening your life. And something I saw that had the potential to lead you down a harder life than you may desire for yourself. I saw a post from a coach that I, I respect her and I enjoy much of her work. This was probably one of the first things I saw and I was like, mm doesn't really vibe with me, but I recognize that her message absolutely resonates with her target audience, which means that they're a perfect fit for one another, right? So her post mentioned, I'm going to make sure I say this as correctly as possible. I didn't take a screenshot and I didn't view it again, and I'll tell you why. But she meant, I saw it once. No, I saw it twice on my feed and that was it. So she mentioned that in the United States, only 7% of men earn over or earn six figures. Okay, so that's only 7% of the male population. And of that 7%, 80% are married already. And she said, now are you ready to build together with someone? Um, and we can help you with that. She and her husband run a coaching service. They can help you with selecting a mate that you can build with. And when I read the the question, are you ready? I said, no, <laughs> to myself. I didn't comment on the post because again, those that resonate with the message will resonate with it. I only come in to object or disagree if it's something vile or blatantly incorrect. This is a matter of preference. People can choose what they like. I saw it and I said, no, no, no. I, I, I'm in the income level that you mentioned in this post. And I would absolutely prefer someone at the same level because I have seen that normally income is a big thing for many men in heterosexual relationships. It's a big thing. And very few people will admit that um, honestly, but that is a thing. And so being a higher earning woman in that environment of having a lower earning partner may not be ideal for me or for him. And I thought to myself, the potential for this, not that they would lead you intentionally down a bad road. I don't believe that at all. But the potential for this depleting some women is very high. Building together, especially based on throwing out an income criteria, can be disastrous. Okay, it can be. It can be absolutely depleting. First things first, I don't know where the stats came from. I couldn't verify them independently and I didn't spend a lot of time trying to verify them because I already knew that that wasn't the reality I was choosing. I was choosing a wonderful, high-earning, loving, and loyal spouse for myself. So I'm already choosing something different. So I didn't really need the data to back up what she was saying because... I only need one person at a time. Like I don't need all of the 7% and I don't need the 20% that are unmarried of the 7%. I just need one person that has that together. 
um, her clients may feel that that's a far less likely option and they may be correct. It's not my reality. It can't be my reality because I was literally working in an environment where there were a lot of six-figure earners and they were not all married. I could have dated one of the unmarried ones. So that was my environment for her clients. That might not be their environment. I understand there are differences there. But I thought of how when you choose a life of ease intentionally, you cannot go into a relationship ready to build because that's completely counter to an easy energy. It doesn't mean that you won't nurture or that you won't foster or that you won't help develop something beautiful. And that might be her intent with that. But personally, I see where that can go really, really wrong all the time. Um, it can absolutely deplete the woman that's involved with that relationship. It can leave her a little bit resentful if not done carefully. I guess that's why she told her followers, hey, if you want to do this, contact us. We can help you pick the right person to do this with. That's not the journey I want to embark on. She's good for saying, you know, if I'm your coach, you'll know she's right. I know that's not my ministry. <laughs> that's not that's not the church I attend. I don't attend the church of he may not earn as much as you want because money is a sign of abundance. And Temporary circumstances are not indicative of long-term patterns. And I'm not a pattern breaker for other people. I work on my own patterns. So if there's a pattern of poor decision-making, it's not my job to fix them. And I'm not here to build a thing with someone who hasn't conquered a system that has been set up in a particular way for many men to thrive and do well. That being said, I mentioned I didn't view it again. And that's because in my world, the vibes don't, it doesn't match the vibe check. It's not a vibe that I wish to continue to ingest. And in fact, after I finish filming this video, I will be going and reading something far more affirming of the reality I am creating. And I will be brainwashing myself with that material because what you consume is what you put out. So if you're consuming lack, uh, scarcity, and accessibility. If you're consuming those things, guess what you create? All the things you consume. So I'm going to go and consume something, even though it's late, I'm going to go and consume something intentionally to counter the message that I just got, because that message is not a reality that I'm wishing upon myself. The person that I am calling into my world is not the person that she described in her post, nor am I the person she's appealing to with that post, but bless her anyway. So yeah, this is, yeah, this has been eight minutes of me rambling about soft life, yes or no, building. Um, I don't find that that's conducive. Building is not conducive to creating a truly soft life full of joy and ease. Um, and building means different things to different people, of course. So you may have an example of building that didn't feel depleting at all. Congratulations. I have examples where I felt absolutely spent. And it could be because of who I chose. But it doesn't matter because I'm choosing differently, including someone that doesn't require building at all. It's my choice. It's my world and I get to create it with my words. So I invite you to do the same. Create the world you want with your words. Speak what you want. Believe in it. Affirm it constantly and watch it come to you. And then you don't have to worry about the numbers. Numbers change. People change too, but numbers definitely change. And let the numbers work for you. You deserve it. You deserve the story that only you could write as beautifully as you can or will. Anyway, that's it. Have a great day or evening and I will talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.